All right, what's up, guys? Joe Sam, the Broke Mirror Boys again. And today we're doing a valve adjustment on a 86 325E E30 chassis. And we'll give you guys a little rundown on how to do it. We already started, so you're gonna have to look up on Pelican Parts how to remove the valve cover. Usually a valve cover gasket DIY will help you do that. And once you get that off, my video will help you out to do the adjustment. So here we have the valve cover off and we're adjusting every valve. So each valve has to have a slack of 0.25 millimeters between the lifter and the actual valve. So we've already done one and five, two and four. Well, we're doing four now. So here's how you do it. We bought a feeler gauge for valves at Advanced Auto Parts, or you can buy a regular feeler gauge and just bend it kind of like that. And what you do is, you go to the valve, you loosen that 10 millimeter nut with a wrench, all right? And then you're gonna stick your feeler gauge under there. And from what I've read, you're supposed to have a kind of dragging feeling between the gauge and the lifter and valve. So basically what you're trying to do is to make sure that there's a 0.25 millimeter difference or a gap between the lifter and valve. That way you bring it back to OEM spec because you guys know that with time and mileage, I mean, this engine has pretty sure from what we know over 200,000 miles. So with time, there's gonna be some wear and that way with the valve adjustment, you get rid of that wear or you even out the wear and bring the gap back to OEM spec. So what you're gonna do is you, list, you loosen that 10 millimeter nut, and then what we're using is my little Harbor Freight tool kit thing, and we grab the little tip that fits in that little hole right there. So once you loosen that, you have access, let me take this out. You have access to moving this like that. Now what that does is that it will either widen the gap or narrow the gap between the lifter and the valve. So the way I've been doing it is I loosen the nut, then I widen the gap. I insert my feeler gauge and then I close the gap. Now you want to make sure that once you close the gap, you don't have any play between the lifter and the valve. That way you have the assurance that there is a 0.25 millimeter gap between the valve and the lifter. So we kind of ran into a little bit of trouble with this one. Since we are using a straight tool, there's no way to actually get the valve to narrow out all the way to get rid of that gap between the lifter and the gauge so we can close the gap we're looking for between the lifter and the valve. So what I would recommend you use is a Allen wrench that fits in there that is pretty small. That way you can get through this little thing right here because I can't, it hits the, the head and I can't go all the way. But once you do that, you close the gap, then you make sure this is done. You tighten it, remove the feeler gauge, and you're gonna make sure the lifter is touching the cam. So you wanna hold it down. And while you're holding it down, you insert the feeler gauge. Now, if you have that draggy feeling that it's kind of like, you don't want it to be so tight that you have trouble removing, like moving around the feeler gauge. And you don't want it so loose like this that you can just move it around freely. What you want is a little bit of drag so that it feels like it's touching. And that way you know that the gap is where it's supposed to be. So once you do that, you tighten it, you make sure it's correct, and you move on to the next valves. Now, the way to do this for each valve is to make sure that the cam lobe is facing down. That way the lifter is not tensed or basically in action of what it's supposed to do. That way it releases the valve spring all the way up and allows us to have that wiggle room to be able to adjust the valve. Now to do that, you're gonna wanna make sure that the lobe is all the way down. So for example, right here, on the lifter we're working on, which is this one. You're gonna see that, let me see if I can focus this for you guys. All right, so you're going to see that the lobe is right there where the lifter moves. 
and the lobe has to be facing down. This lobe, for example, is facing the driver's side of the car. This lobe over here, right there, is facing up, so this lifter is in action. Now, where you want it to be is called top, depth, top dead center. I'm sorry for my misuse of vocabulary. I don't know how to speak English. So, you want to have a dot, you land, hand, hand, so you want to have it at top dead center in order to have the valve adjustment be correct. So to do that, like I said, you make sure the lobe is facing down. This lobe, like I said, that one, for example, is activating the lifter. That one is not. I mean, wait, that one is that one right there. It's hard to focus on the camera because the camera is not very focusing on this. So. You're gonna want that lobe facing down, all right? And the way to do that, the way we did it, is that we took out all the spark plugs, that way the car uh, loses compression. And since we have an open diff, if you have an LSD, you can do it a different way, and I'll explain that now. But most cars will have an open diff, so what you wanna do is, you're gonna wanna put blocks on the front, the front tires like we did. I don't know if we put that block there, because <laughs> that's not how you put a block. <laughs> but um I didn't even see that until now. You're gonna want to block the front tires and then put the gar put the car in fifth gear and then lift one side so that the other tire is on the ground. And once you lift it, once you when you spin that tire, the cams are gonna move. And with the spark plugs out, there's no compression, so it allows it to move freely. So that will give you the ability to move the cam around so that it's not activated and that the lobe faces down. Now, if you don't know how to do this, this is a little bit more complicated. It takes a little bit more of experience, but if you do your proper research and you find your diagrams and pictures, this will be a lot easier. So like I said, that lobe right there is facing up. You want the lobe to be facing down like it is here. And that, it will, that is what the lobe looks like. It's kind of like a little extension, looks like a water drop. So basically the top of the water drop has to be facing down and the rounded part of the water drop, which is the lower part in this case, has to be facing up. That way you have the correct room. So like I said, you remove the spark plugs, lift the car on one side, and that gives you the room to turn the wheel and move the camshaft. Now, if you have an LSD, you're gonna do it in a different way because the LSD would be a bit different, I believe. So instead, what you can do is lift it from the middle of the diff in the back. And I'll show you guys where to do that from. So what you can do is, like I said again, chuck, I mean, you block the front with the tire chucks, and then you lift it from the middle right there, and then you just spin one tire. But for an open diff, you're gonna lift it on one side, have one tire on the ground, and then I'll allow you to do it with no issues. And there's the IS. So that's how we're doing it. You could always do it from the crank bolt shaft thing in the front, but that requires you to lift the front, remove the belly pan, and then stick a wrench in there. We're doing it the easier way, more uh, broke beamer boy style. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Subscribe and like to see more content. Let me know what you guys wanna see in our other videos, any maintenance questions you guys have on any BMW pretty much because I like that's what we do so I could definitely help you guys out so like comment subscribe and stay tuned for more videos thanks for watching guys